One last roll of the dice for the Atlantic hurricane season. Not over yet on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 22nd. So we've been absent for a few days, but so have the tropics to be fair, not much has happened at all. We are code blue, if you missed it, Tropical Storm Midhealy did briefly form in the North Indian Ocean and made landfall a few days ago in Bangladesh, but now we're looking towards the Atlantic once more because there is a 50% chance of development for a frontal system that's currently over the central Atlantic there. Day 175 of hurricane season and it could eventually spin up into a subtropical or tropical cyclone and then curl up towards the northeast around the Azores and possibly impact those islands as it turns post-tropical next week. In the eastern Pacific, the National Hurricane Center have still got an area of interest marked in the middle there at 20%. We're not very fussed on that at all at this stage, so we've not marked it anymore. Uh, we did have it the other day, uh, but now it's scrubbed from our books. And in the western Pacific, we've got a 20% area of interest that we've marked just off the coast of southern Vietnam. That could eventually become a tropical cyclone into the Gulf of Thailand, either before or after the Malay Peninsula, other models suggesting it could become a storm in the Indian Ocean later on in the week, next week probably, and passing through the Andaman Sea into the Bay of Bengal. So that's something to watch long term for potential development either east of the Malay Peninsula or possibly west there later on. And in the European region, the Mediterranean Sea, we have marked a 10% area of interest that might try its luck. Uh, just off the southwestern coast of uh, Sicily in uh, Italy and then will eventually move into Tunisia and Algeria. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery then. This is the Atlantic right now. There's that big frontal system over the central part of the basin really taking hold across a large area there. Now it's not going to spit out this system anytime soon. It will probably be on day two, maybe even day three or four. So we can't really look at anything yet. This is the Eastern Pacific area of interest, which to be honest, doesn't look too bad. Uh, rotation is a little bit there, but not fully at all. Uh, convection certainly playing its part on the western and northwestern side there blowing up quite significantly although just uh, fading away at those last few frames a little bit blowing up again on the right hand side there um, a very late season hopeful system that probably won't form now this one definitely won't form i think the atlantic Caribbean there was another area of interest if you missed it 99 L well there it is right now looks horrid really uh, off the coast of Venezuela and now looking at the western Pacific region around the Philippines there's a bit of convection there off the eastern islands but look further towards the left hand side of your screen and you can already see the precursor there to what might become that next system a big horde of clouds really uh, towards the southeast of southern Vietnam in the southern part of the South China Sea and some of that extending towards the coast of uh, Malaysia and possibly even Thailand as well. So we could see developments on this in a few days but certainly nothing just yet except for possibly some elevated rainfall and speaking of which this potential system would deliver huge amounts of rain if it did form. Well, sea surface temperatures still remain opportunistic for parts of the eastern Pacific, especially where that invest is. The highest uh, temperature there near 30 degrees off the coast of Mexico. The Caribbean is still pushing it as well, uh, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius and still a little bit of a loop eddy there into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, keeping things relatively warm. Uh, but overall, the Atlantic is, of course, cooling, as you would expect at this time of year. Western Pacific is still remaining fairly warm in those lower latitudes, uh, still really starting to fall away off the eastern coast of Luzon though, but still temperatures looking good uh, overall. The Marshall Islands, uh, temperatures, sorry, the Mariana Islands, and but the Marshall Islands I suppose now that I've said it, around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. Bay of Bengal still staying fairly warm as well, especially south and east where this system could develop. What you usually see at this time of year is systems that blow up over the 
central part of the bay and then weaken rapidly before landfall further north. And this is the southwest Indian Ocean uh, where you can see those temperatures really warming up off Madagascar, very warm off the coast of Western Australia and the Northern Territory and really warming up in the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. A warm spot now in Vanuatu and off the northern islands of Fiji and Nova Samoa, very warm temperatures there as well, really getting into the summer spirit down there. Compared to average, the Western Pacific is generally 1 to 2 degrees above. Similar story for the North Indian Ocean. Southwest Indian Ocean still has a very hot slot there uh, near Mauritius. South Pacific is hit and miss. Eastern Pacific is still quite warm compared to average and the El Nino effect still very prominent. The Atlantic is quite above average there as well, especially in the eastern subtropical zone where that system could develop. Oceanic heat content though is not over there, it is in the Caribbean still a few spots, certainly not as much as when we were looking out for potential tropical cyclone 22 last week. In the eastern Pacific there's still a few little um, holdouts there, well out to sea, and in the western Pacific it's really starting to fizzle out there as well, and what a drab season overall it's been in terms of numbers there in the western Pacific, and it really is going out with a whimper by the looks of things. So here's the GFS computer model then looking out towards the next five days and you can start to see this system take effect eventually from that big front. It's a broad system, a system that struggles to wrap around properly. Uh, earlier runs of the GFS model had a much more conclusive tropical storm. This was uh, I think this morning or last night, uh, but here it is right now and it's still looking fairly mixed. Models aren't really sure what to do with it or whether it even becomes tropical and so 50% really split, I think that's about fair. Off the coast of Vietnam then, we're watching this area for development of that potential tropical system. GFS is very um, uh, happy about that and there it is developing into a tropical storm moving through the Malay Peninsula in Thailand and then out over the Andaman Sea. GFS is really the only, uh, the only model that definitely forms it before it reaches the uh, Indian Ocean. The CMC comes pretty close as well though and quite a lot of the models have something happening at some point. Looking at rainfall expectations though they are going to be extremely high for some of these regions that could get impacted particularly in southern Vietnam and along the entire Malay Peninsula but particularly further north there you can see right around I think that's the border between Malaysia and Thailand if my geography uh, doesn't fail me but temp uh, the rainfall not temperatures rainfall there could reach 16 inches there on that uh, forecast that's 400 millimeters and for parts of southern and eastern Vietnam even could get up to around 14 inches that's 350 millimeters and some high values elsewhere and some values at sea reaching about 23 24 inches that would be uh, 600 millimeters if that occurred over any land areas. Of course there are some islands in that area too. Well let's check the longer range. We're actually looking at the Central Pacific for a potential late season surprise. Could it be an early Christmas present Hone? Well there is a little something that tries to develop 29th 30th 1st of December and starts to move towards the Western Pacific. I'm not convinced that becomes a tropical cyclone although if it does it probably does it very close to the international dateline which means could we get robbed once again of uh, tropical storm Hone? Well uh, we'll have to find out. It might not even come to fruition at all. North Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, following this system that moves into the Andaman Sea and then the Bay of Bengal proper, and there it is, becoming a powerful cyclone, getting to Category 2 or maybe Category 3 status there as we cross to the new month and starts to move slowly towards the coast of eastern India and Bangladesh by the time we enter the first days of December. Um, and that is a typical pattern there and it will start to move over cooler sea surface temperatures. If it continues to store like that, it would weaken rapidly. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our products for your per usual and all of our full season individual storm animations still on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt. I expect we'll be restocking those shelves pretty soon. 
Well, in the Silly range then, looking first of all at the continuation of that Bay of Bengal storm, well there it is, continue to move too slowly to maintain itself and weakens quite a lot before making landfall. Still a strong tropical storm there, but that's around the 3rd or 4th of December, of course, it's still very far out for a system that hasn't even developed yet, so I wouldn't put any uh, worry into this at this point. Uh, but certainly something to be mindful of as we get closer towards the end of the month and certainly at this time of year even into late December you can sometimes see tropical impacts up towards Bangladesh. Now in the southern hemisphere there is also a potential development in the Silly Range and it's the old favourite location. It's been a hotspot so far already this season hasn't it? The only place where we've seen real development and there's another one, another tropical cyclone, a very small one becoming a category 1, maybe category 2 there as it passes east of Vanuatu. Um, the storms really like this area for their winter vacations by the looks of things this year so far. Well. We'll see whether that happens, but that, once again, is extremely long range. You can talk about all of this on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from all around the world. Well, on this day was another bit of a surprise. A bit? A lot, probably. Uh, Cyclone Gatti! Who could have forecasted that one? On November 22nd, 2020, crazy year for many reasons, and threw up a Category 3 out of almost thin air as it moved on towards the coast uh, of Africa as a very powerful storm weakened drastically as it made landfall in Somalia and started to move northeastwards peaked as a 115 mile per hour category 3 and the only system that was presently active on this day three years ago well back to today then and we are code blue that's for the western pacific system by the way in the atlantic the next name is still vince a lot of people thought we'd get it last week it never came to fruition never even looked close to doing it in the eastern pacific the next name is ramon and in the central pacific of course it is still hone in the western pacific the next name now is jellowat in the north indian ocean it's michang and goodness knows how that one's pronounced and moving on towards the southern hemisphere then <clears throat> coming up on the naming list in the australian region the next name is jasper southwest indian ocean still waiting to start with alvaro and in the south pacific the next name is nat hopefully we're back to normal service and we should have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night 